Uh, this is your captain speaking. Do you know why they say put on your own mask first before assisting others if there's a rapid loss in cabin pressure? It's because you may only have a few moments of what they call useful consciousness. So the FAA has determined that if there is a rapid loss of cabin pressure, all the air in the fuselage leaves it. If you're at a cruising altitude, depending on that altitude, you may only have a few minutes to a few seconds of time to do anything before you become unuseful and pass out. For example, if you were cruising at 22,000 feet and all the air left the plane, you'd have about five minutes before you became lack of oxygen stupid. It's a technical term. And if you were cruising above 40,000 feet, which is very common, you only have about five seconds. So if you are oxygen dumb, you cannot assist anyone or get your own mask on before you, you know, mm, expire from the lack of respiring. So that's why they say always put on your mask first because that's how you can be the most helpful. They don't want everyone trying to help everyone else and they all just pass out in the process. So remember this task, put on your mask. Uh, the weather in Los Angeles is about <laughs> 65 degrees. Uh, uh, I should have you in the ground in about 10, 10, 10 minutes. Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all your comments, questions, and corrections and address them to my P.O. box labeled, uh, you done been answered. <laughs> and then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, uh, uh, oh, wow, oh, oh, uh, 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 oh. But getting right to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we were trying to figure out whether or not you could break into Superman's Fortress of Solitude. We took this question from a very fun panel from All-Star Superman, where Superman has a house key that weighs half a million tons, but he says it is made out of white dwarf star material, or dwarf star as he says it. I calculated that if it is actually dwarf star material, then you might in fact be able to pick it up, or else Clark Kent is way off about something Thing other than, you know, how good his disguises are. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from many of you, like Alex Zimmerman and Diego Ramos and others who say, well, couldn't you just pick the lock or make a 3D printed version of Superman's key just by looking at it because it looks like a house key and break in that way? Well, I think while Superman may have missed a few things in this design, I don't think he's that dumb, which is to say that you could just 3D print a version of the key that didn't weigh half a million tons and just insert it into the lock, and there you go. First of all, you'd have to stand at the door and try to pick the lock. Superman, I hear, is a fast individual, and he would probably hear you and punch you into the sun! which would just rip your head off. So that's one problem. And this ignores the fact that there might be something special to the lock itself. If the key is so special and is made out of dwarf star material, who knows how it interacts with the lock that is not specified. Maybe the lock is similarly massive and has to be turned by superhuman force or is made out of the same material and is very hard to move around or it only moves when Superman is pushing hard enough at it. I don't know. None of this is specified, which is why I didn't say you can pick the lock or you can just make a copy of the key, because that seems too easy. Superman would have thought of that, right? Our next big comment comes from a lot of you as well, like Jaden DeMaio and Ninja Ombre Palito, who say, why isn't the key just made out of some mixture of material? Maybe Superman didn't make it out of just dwarf star material, but maybe like a little sprinkling of neutron star as well, so that all of the masses and the densities and areas and volumes work out. Well, sure, you could do this. If you set up the equations correctly and find the minimum amount of neutron star mass and volume that you could add to the key, you would only need about half a cubic millimeter of neutron star material, and then the rest of the material could be dwarf star material, and that would make the key the correct mass. Why I didn't say anything like this, or like many of you commented, like it could be an ally, why I didn't say that is because that's just speculating at this point. Superman said Dwarf Star. It's right there in the panel. So that's all that I went with. And I wanted to evaluate it at face value. Beyond that, we would just be speculating, but you are all correct. If you combined materials, you can get the correct mass. However, I do not know how those materials would interact. I'm not an astrophysicist, and it's already really weird because the material itself would explode in a nuclear-like explosion the second you removed it from either of those stars. So, uh... 
this is your captain speaking. We got the next comment coming in. Uh, got a nice uh, tailwind. Tailwind of about uh, 20 knots. Our next comment comes from Danny Lego, who says, even if you use something to contain the material inside the key, when Superman holds it by the tip, the torque of 500,000 tons would probably make it bend. Well, yeah, I guess the Kryptonian magic that is holding all the neutron star, dwarf star material, or whatever, together would provide some of the structural stability, and it depends on that, but you're right. If it was a weird enough setup, then you could pick up the key with enough force to counteract its weight, but then the weight of the key past its center of mass would bend it straight down towards the Earth immediately, and that wouldn't be a very useful key. Our next comment comes from Onyx Nero, who says, I know this may sound silly, but what if Superman was farting to fly through space? You know what? That's ridiculous. Just because Superman flies with no real scientific explanation that makes any real sense, I don't like the gravity explanations. It doesn't mean I'm just gonna get into like a farting explanation. What kind of show do you think this is? Okay, if Superman was in space, then he could uh, eject a lot of gas from his butt like a rocket would, and that would allow him to travel through space. The only problem would be the amount of gas that he would need and the exit velocity that that gas would have to go out of his exit. What Superman could be doing is uh, swallowing air and then compressing it in his superhumanly strong stomach, and then his valves, sphincters, could be uh, holding on to all that gas so that his insides are like a pressurized tank as he uh, swallows more and more and more air, so he's like a scuba tank inside of his valves. And then after that, he could control with his valves, rectum, <laughs> a very high velocity stream of gas out of his exit to propel him through space, kind of like how we use maneuvering thrusters on uh, rockets and spacecraft and stuff. You happy? Space. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to frequent commenter Ninja Bear Films, who says thickness of ice can support weight is shown by P equals A H squared, where P is the load, H is the thickness of the ice, and A is a constant. So for half a million tons, the ice would need to be 31,000 inches thick at the North Pole, where his fortress of solitude rests, so the key wouldn't crack the ice and fall to the bottom of the ocean, about half a mile thick. But the Arctic ice is only two to three meters thick, so Superman setting that half a million ton key under his doormat would crack the ice and sink the fortress of solitude under the water. So yes, unlike the South Pole, the North Pole does not have any land underneath it. It is just a thick layer of ice above seawater. But that thick layer of ice is less than 10 meters thick. So putting something really, 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 really heavy on something that's only about 30 feet thick could pose a problem. Now, I found the equation that you are using. It's called Gold's formula, and it's kind of a back of the envelope estimate for how heavy something can be on top of ice if you are engineering a structure on top of ice, for example. Now, I use some different numbers than you did, and I got because of the factor of safety that Superman would probably want. And I got a thickness of ice a little over 100 meters, so not half a mile, but still over 100 meters, which is a lot more than just 10 meters that the North Pole has to offer you in terms of ice thickness. So putting something really, really heavy on that kind of ice would pose a serious engineering concern. And yes, it could crack the ice and sink the Fortress of Solitude, maybe if water got in there somewhere, but this is Superman we're talking about. He probably thought of that. If he's building an entire fortress on a relatively thin layer of ice, he probably made the foundations go through that ice all the way down to the seafloor and into the Earth's crust itself just to support it. I mean, he can do basically anything. He lived inside a sun for a little while. So yes, you are right. The key itself, aside from the lock, would be a major engineering challenge. And for making us think about all of that, you, Ninja Bear Films, are indeed a super nerd. Ha! But of course, I'm not always right. You all stump me on those live streams all the time. So what did I get wrong last week? Our biggest correction this week comes from a number of you, and you're all asking about, okay, so what if the key really was neutron star material or half a million tons actually? Wouldn't that sink through the floor of the Fortress of Solitude, through the ice, and into the center of the planet? 
Well, like I said in the video, the neutron star material doesn't really work. It is just too dense to be in that key and still have the correct mass. But let's just say that it is neutron star material. If that's the case, and the key is the size of a house key, if it was laying on its side like it is under the mat of the Fortress of Solitude, then the pressure underneath the surface of that key would be half the pressure at the center of the sun. <laughs> and from all the sources that I could find, surprisingly hard to find, from NASA and others and astronomers, yes, if you had neutron star material like that in that small amount of volume, producing an incredibly high amount of pressure at the surface, like we just said, then it would sink through concrete and steel and seafloor and be on its way towards the center of the planet. You're correct. It would be such a dangerous object, but only if you were within a few meters of it, like Lois was. Her hand would... All the blood would fl You don't want it. Our next correction comes from Behegel65, who says there's no such word as you stayed around 10 minutes. You imagine. Imagine is the word. Superman slash Clark Kent would correct you. All right, let's go to the tape. Imagine half a million hmm. tons of material. That certainly sounds like imagine to me. I imagine, is that what you want me to say? I said, imagine, like, imagine, imagine. Yeah, you can still say, imagine, it still kind of works. Just imagine it. A lot of you seem to have a problem with the way I pronounce words, but to that I say, that is the epitome of I don't care. Sorry, that was a bit of a hyperbole. I do care. Our next correction comes from Michael Foss. He says, can Superman even lift that key? It really depends on what iteration of Superman you are talking about. Well, in All-Star Superman, which is a fantastic series of comics, there is an additional panel where Superman is being tested for his strength after being supercharged by solar radiation. And the panel itself says that he can lift slash support 200 quintillion tons. That's two and a half times the mass of the moon. So, yeah, I think he can lift it. Uh... But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to MDTMJAT, who says, technically speaking, which is the best kind of speaking, you wouldn't be breaking in if you used a key. Well, before you commit any potential crimes, let me just read a quote from a real lawyer. Force is not needed. What the breaking element means is that at the very least you opened a door or cracked a window. Even if a key was used, that is still considered breaking. Entering just means that any single part of your body crossed the plane of the premises. It has to be done without permission as well. So technically speaking, which is the best kind of speaking, even if you had a copy of Superman's Fortress of Solitude key or could lift it yourself, you are still breaking and entering and you just committed a crime, super nerd! Oh! Don't do that. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is gonna be because you saw it two days earlier than everyone else. Ho oh, ho! And you got other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry, and you might wanna think about subscribing to Alpha pretty soon because, oh, I may have something fairly substantial heading there very soon. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is <sighs> How to Fight a Velociraptor and Win. This is my Jeff Goldblum impression from earlier is what, oh, oh, ooh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, in the next episode of Because Science, because you all enjoyed How to Fight a T-Rex so much, we are going back to this kind of mini-series now and explaining how to fight a real Velociraptor. Would they be as scaly and scary as they are in the movies? What tactics should you take? How awesome is my alliteration right now? We are going back to the advice of Dr. John R. Hutchinson to see what he would do if you had to fight one of these beasts IRL, which you will never do, but that's why the void is amazing. We can do that. So stay tuned. Did your water rumble? So go watch the latest episode of Because Science all about Superman's key and whether or not you should break into his house. You shouldn't. <laughs> and leave me all your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. And I look at that all the time for suggestions for future episodes. So go do it. The Superman episode, in fact, was a suggestion from Twitter, so keep those nerdy comments coming. And don't forget, how those New Year's resolutions coming? What did I say? Tell someone, make them small, make them achievable. I know, I know, 
it's fine. You still have a few days to get back on track.